Today we're going over more of the best songs of all time. All of the recommendations for the songs in this video are from my community tab. I asked the question, what do you think the best song of all time is, in your opinion? And these are the answers. This is the third part in a series, but you don't have to see the first two to see this. In fact, I'm linking the other videos in the description, and I highly recommend if you don't see any songs you're interested in in this video to go check those out and see if there's songs you like there instead. Very simple, this is what's happening. If I haven't heard the song before, we're gonna give it a full listen, go sit down, react to it and i'll give my thoughts and we'll rate it one through ten the song i have heard before we'll probably pull it up maybe skim through it again maybe we won't and then we're going to rate it one through ten give thoughts and that's that anyways the clips for this are recorded over a few different days so stuff seems a bit different every now and then that's probably why and i hope you enjoy next we have teeth like god shoe shine by modest mouse the guitars are so unhinged and it kicks off the album so well it has an insane song structure with extreme loudness and mellow successions or sections fuck and then when you think it's over it comes back twice as hard true true an amazing intro on an amazing album i love lonesome crowded west so much you know in fact boom, look at this shit. boom i'm moving different i'm moving different lonesome crowded west look at this Oh my god. Uh, unfortunately, it is a paper case and not a jewel case, which uh, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined type stuff. Anyways, Teeth Like God, Shoe Shine. Fucking amazing song. A really good song on an amazing album, as I said before, as you said as well. And yeah, it's just, it kicks off the album right away, bringing up a lot of the kind of themes about the lonesome crowded West and just talking about like malls and shit. But it just, it goes hard as fuck. But let's just pull this up. I need to listen to some of this. It can immediately just kicks in. And then it cuts and it's like. Right. And then it, it gets. It just really slows down. And then it kicks back up slowly. And then this part at the and then it ends up. Yeah, no, a ten out of ten for sure. Without a without a doubt just such a roller coaster of a song that just goes up and down up and down and then right yeah as you said right when you think it's just chilling and we're gonna end boom right back up it's just insane i love it i love the vocals i just love everything about honestly most of lonesome crowded west but teeth like god shoe shine definitely highlights the best of all the parts of lonesome crowded west in a single song and i absolutely love it so yeah i give it a 10 10 out of 10 for teeth like god shoe shine next we have White Ceiling by Paranol. Rawest and most emotional song I've ever heard. Has the most passionate performance from Paranol, probably in his whole discography. The guitar melody is beautiful and the last four or five minutes are insane. The lyrics are extremely potent, using waking up to the same white ceiling every day as a way to show how his poor mental state is just staying constant. Amazing song and even better when listening to the album full. I love it. Yeah, no, uh, White Ceiling is for sh It's not my favorite Paranol song and I, I don't even know if it's my favorite off uh, to see next part of the dream but it's for sure one of his best objectively probably my favorite paranormal song is personally growing pain i just think it is so emotionally potent like god fucking damn but white ceiling is a 10 minute trip and as you said how it fits into the album's like kind of theme with the alarm in the beginning of him waking up from the dream and then yeah the lyrics being he just sees the same white ceiling every single day he's just fucking stuck he feels like he's stuck he's going nowhere and it's just incredibly emotional it fucking hits like a truck it's a banger that's another thing it's a banger and it just is incredibly raw i love the mix of samples from welcome to the nhk um in the song as well as it just kind of adds this extra element to it especially near the end of the song where it just feels like we're fucking splitting into a hundred different parts all at once right we're just breaking honestly more than anything the song is just incredibly emotional it's really interesting and it's a banger it goes hard as fuck even if you don't care about the album or the lyrics or anything because it's all in korean right you can still be like this shit is awesome 
because it's just a straight fucking banger. I compare it a lot whenever I listen to it to Boxing Day by Carsey Headrest, just because the blown out drums in it are very similar in my opinion. And just its way of making 10 minutes feel like nothing. Just because you're so stuck in the song, right? The song just entrances you so hard that I just forget about fucking everything else I'm doing and I just want to listen to that shit. Yeah, White Ceiling is for sure a 10 out of 10. One of Paranoid's best, one of the best off to see the next part of the dream and just incredible in so many different ways. But at the end of the day, it's also just a banger. So it's it's just fucking good. During the next section, I was sick. So if I seem drowsy or if I sound fucky, you know why. It's a uh, it's the next day or a few days from when I last recorded. Now, the issue with this is that the it just keeps getting fucked the listing right because more of you keep coming and commenting which i appreciate a lot thank you for doing that but then what happens is um it fucks up the order so i gotta keep like a a google doc of this shit <laughs> so so that i know which ones i've done and haven't done and as you can see i haven't done a lot of them so because of that it might be a bit fucked but we're gonna do the next one which i think is where's my mind this person ticken 73 says where's my mind gives me visceral chills who the fuck is that by the pixies i'm gonna assume it's the pixies which one should i listen to the single or the um album release where's my mind okay i'm assuming it's this one so the pixies are a band that i think all of us are well aware with that i haven't listened to not a single fucking time i genuinely don't know any of their songs what they sound like at all from what i get they like started the whole like soft loud thing and they were big inspiration for a lot of big grunge acts like nirvana and stuff uh because what didn't kurt cobain say that he's basically just trying to copy the pixies on bleach or something anyways let's give this a listen i've never heard the pixies before so let's see let's see This sounds familiar. I've heard this before. Wait, what the fuck? The vocals kind of remind me of Modest Mouse, which I, I imagine Modest Mouse is probably inspired by the Pixies. Oh. Where have I heard this before? Oh, damn, okay. I really like his vocals. That, like, faint, like, vocal in the back, that's... All right, well, uh, that's that. Where's My Mind by Pixies, or The Pixies, or whatever. Yeah, I want to say I've heard... Hold on, let's try to find that video. Yeah, okay, that's where I've heard it. That's where I've heard it. I was going to say, like, this sounds really familiar. Is this, this, uh video by i'm a cyborg but that's okay they do like these they just like play put movies with like uh music they make like fan videos it's this one where i believe the movie's train spotters i've never seen it but i've watched this video yeah okay yeah that's that's where i've heard it from i was gonna say like it sounded familiar yeah that's a good song it did that thing where it's like the instrumentals would ramp up and you think it would just like go but it would like stop and then just kind of pick back up right away, which was interesting, kind of, you know, kept me on my toes, you feel me? I really liked his vocals, both on just the general chorus and the verses. Honestly, I can't tell you uh, why I like them so much. I just liked how they sound. I like those sort of vocals. Kind of Remind me a lot of Modest Mouse, which I imagine, you know, Modest Mouse is probably inspired by the Pixies. It was really enjoyable and didn't overstay its welcome. It was just straight to the point, a catchy ass song. I mean, what more, what more can I say? You feel me? Yeah, fuck it. I give it a 10. I give it a 10. That's a good ass song. And I'm, I can see myself re-listening to the fuck out of that. Editing again. I did in fact go and listen to the fuck out of it. That song is amazing. Yeah, 10 out of 10 for Where Is My Mind. Next, we have Purple Rain by Prince. Literally made me fly into space. So I'll go with that. Now I've heard Purple Rain before. I don't know. Is there anybody who hasn't heard Purple Rain before? Like that's you no know, all time classic. Sorry if I ever feel 
Whoa, wait, Purple Rain's eight minutes? What the fuck? I guess I've only ever heard like the radio version because I've heard it on the radio, obviously, right? But I, I didn't know it was eight minutes long. What the fuck? All right, yo, let's give this. I'm really interested because I've only ever heard like a shorter version. So probably the radio edit. Also, sorry guys if I ever feel kind of out of it in these videos. I usually record this uh, early in the morning, like 30 minutes after I woke up because just based off like, you know, my life and shit, that's the only time I really have to like sit down and record for a few hours hours so if i look tired it's not because i don't like the music it's because i'm literally just fucking tired all right let's give this a listen copyright's about to hit me like a bitch for Something to do with the story of the album because I thought there was like sort of a theme or story to the album. Wow, what a fucking song. Holy shit. Purple Rain by Prince literally made me fly into space, so I'll go with that. Yeah, I can understand why. Easily a 10 out of 10. I don't think I have to explain why. I'm a bit lost for words, if I'm being honest. I was, because it, I was genuinely wondering, like, where the fuck do we go from here? Because after the first four minutes, that's basically the radio cut, right? He stopped singing, and we still have, like, four or five minutes left. It's just this amazing guitar. He's still got the vocals in there, and then we drop in just the keys and the violin. Oh, my. It was so, so good. It was so cinematic. It was so large. The lyrics prince was just saying like stick with me type shit like be there for me yeah no everything was so good i love it, especially near the end when uh of the vocals prince kind of like it almost sounded like his voice was like swelling up right like he was like choking up trying to sing it and it was it was just beautiful it was beautiful i felt like i was fucking levitating i felt like i was going to heaven and prince was fucking guiding me that shit was insane absolutely purple rain a 10 out of 10 what a like dude what a fucking closer too Hey, that's the that's the last song of the album right it is yeah dude what a fucking closer all right next we have sympathy for the devil by the rolling stones which what fucking version is this from the stones got too many damn compilations on their fucking spotify well i hope this is the right one because this is the one we're fucking listening to oh wait it's the song yeah okay yeah I, i'm aware of this song <laughs> You guess my name. I mean, it's a classic, bro. It's a classic. Is he talking from the perspective of the devil? Is that, is that the point? Oh. Color me surprised. That. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to say? It's an all-time. It's an all-time classic, right? That's a a classic rock. Okay, iconic song. Everybody knows that song. Um. Uh, apparently I didn't by name though, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it's a good-ass song. Honestly, I've 
heard mainly just like the first minute um mainly because i was in like a history of rock music class and it was uh had, he did not play the full songs in that class so i heard like the first minute of that but yeah it was it's a good song i like how like the electric guitars is shown as like it's solo and at the end they combine it with the vocals and it's really nice because the whole song is just it's weird because it feels a bit kind of upbeat and like catchy a bit happy uh when the ly lyrics my guess my interpretation is he's talking from the perspective of the devil because he's talking about all this like horrible shit that he like kind of did so i'm assuming he's talking about the devil i said sympathy for the devil right yeah no, that was that was really good honestly i was fucking with it i felt like maybe it went on for just a bit too long um you know i wish i could have heard the electric guitar more just a tiny bit more because i felt like it was a bit underused but at the same time i mean like it's a classic it's a classic song i'm just i'm just not feeling it like a hundred percent right it's not like it's not like purple rain where i was li literally fucking levitating um so i'd probably give it a nine out of ten i still think it's really good it kept my attention the whole time you feel me um and i was i was vibing out to it but i just thought it was a tiny bit repetitive uh which i i mean from songs of that era tends to be the case when they run a bit longer so you know take again take my opinion with a grain of fucking salt but yeah nine out of ten sympathy for the devil i'm a tiny bit sick and a tiny bit tired so okay 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 i'm locked in um something on your mind by karen Dal who who the fuck is Karen Dalton? Oh. Yeah, I have no clue who the fuck this. Is. Like what? Like 60s folk sort of type beat. Yeah, that's a that's a bar, that's facts. Yes, I'm curious if you're the person I think you are. As a pause to sneeze. My apologies, you feel me? Like, fuck. That violin is doing a whole fucking lot right now. Hey, cool little, little, when did this come out? When did this come out? Cool little 60s. Oh, 2022? No way. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, cool little, you know, folk song, classic folk song. Yeah, uh, reminds me of like, from what I heard of Bob Dylan and stuff. Loki, like old, like folk shit, especially like 60s, I'm not familiar with. The bit I've heard is like Leonard Conan, which I don't even think he, was he from the 60s or was he from the 70s? I, I don't fucking know. She, I mean, she was speaking facts, right? She was just straight up about it. She was, something's on your mind, you know, keep on, on some like Kanye, kid, like keep moving forward. That's kind of the vibe I got. But um, I'm gonna be real. Maybe it's just not for me. Like, I thought it was cool, but I, I was literally, I was just left thinking, like, nice. That, that's about it. <laughs> I did enjoy it. I like the lyrics. I like her vocals because I think they, they kind of, you know, she kicks it up a notch when it's needed. I think the violin with the, the guitar works very well, especially at the end. Maybe I just don't gravitate towards it as much as, as you do, which I'm not, again, my opinion don't matter. My opinion does not matter. You should hate my opinion. I don't know how else to describe it, but it was missing the sauce. You feel me? It was missing the sauce. Uh, there is no sauce present in the song, in my opinion. That, that's my review. That's my official review. Uh, I don't really know how to describe it. I just, I enjoyed it, but I, I didn't, man, the, the channel is called Normal Person Reviews. You expect me to give some detailed analysis. Fuck all that. Eight out of 10, something, something on your mind by Karen Dalton. Next song is the microphones of Glow Part 2. The audio messed up. I, I, yeah. The track. Thank you for clarifying. Scratches my every need in music. From the chaos start and raw feelings and vocals of Phil, groovy drums at 340. The whole song, it smells like a newly built house, but it's getting destroyed by a tsunami and heavy rain. Obviously, again, Glow Part 2 has so many good songs, and I, you can see my likes, right? The, the first, like, the run of the first, like, four or five songs, insane perfect in my opinion banger after banger from phil and the glow part two is no exception you feel me the way it leads in from i want winds to blow it's just really nice how it continues the chaos and then it kind of ends mellow which is like the opposite of how i want winds to blow goes so that's kind of a cool thing yeah i mean i've listened to the song a lot but let's just you know refresh our minds a bit
And then Bracey's like, I took my shirt off in the yard. This part right here. Especially on this song, I really like Phil's vocals because he sounds like manic as shit. Especially, where is it? Dude, just the end part. Chill, chill. Guys would rather make a masterpiece than go to therapy after a breakup, sort of God. No, the, the, yeah, the glow part too. Just just another one of many 10 out of 10 songs off of the album the go part two has a track 10 out of time come on it's just yeah as you described it's movement from incredibly chaotic to like more mellow is really nice and it's also in my opinion probably one of the strongest vocal performances from phil on the whole album i guess i would describe the vocals as like like desperate maybe he's just letting it all out and i think the instrumentals are just perfect for it it's fucking heartbreaking but it's also a banger like that shit goes hard and uh I love it in every single way. I mean, most of the tracks off the Glow Part 2 are pretty good. I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't fuck with the instrumental tracks that hard. Just add that to another 10 out of 10 banger that Phil's got in his catalog, you feel me? The Glow Part 2 track, 10 out of 10, easily. Hello, this is quite a bit of time later from the last time I recorded for the best song of all time series. If things seem a bit weird, that's why. Also, I had to switch things up and what I mean by that is that I am still going off the community tab but the issue is is YouTube organizes the community tab based off of like mix of newest and most popular and because of that the order of the comments changes like every day and I just think that's unfair to people who put their answer in like when I first posted this and because there's some that I haven't answered that were like they commented right away so that's why I've compiled all the comments in a google doc so I will just be going off this google doc from now on when I get new comments I will put them in the google doc so if you see that and you're like why does it why is it different that is why okay brief explanation over let's get straight into it so as you can see I just copied and pasted the comments directly from the community tab into here so the ones that are highlighted we've already done the ones we haven't uh we haven't as you see there's quite a bit this is the more new stuff their next song is fortune by dog faced hermans some of the most creative punk music you'll ever hear super catchy guitar and drums paired alongside the vocalist's expressive voice and horn playing me Playing makes this one very unique listen. Okay. Damn, this is obscure as fuck. As old as hell, too. Or not really. 1991. No, that's still pretty old. As per usual, guys, I just woke the fuck up. Sorry, I haven't got to record much lately. I've been, uh, I had finals at, uh, at midterms. So, you know, it is what it is. But let's get straight into it. Fortune by Dog Faced Hermans. Yo, okay. Yo, this goes so fucking hard. I like kind of these like higher, like upper register, I think is the term, vocals, where she's singing at a higher pitch. That's, it fits with the song. It's really nice. Also, the guitar almost reminds me of like, uh, like beach music. Like when they like shred the guitar for like beach songs, it reminds me similar, similar to that. Oh shit. The cowbell. Yes, sir. I think this is also the trumpet. What, what was it? Tr uh, drums, pair of uh, horn, or horn, or whatever. The horn that does add a, a nice touch to the song. I like this, like, kind of. Oh, yo! Yeah. <laughs> yo, yeah, this end instrumental. Amazing. Really cool stuff, bro. That shit sounded like the Cowboy Bebop uh, song at the end. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Um, Dog Faced Herman's Fortune. It reminded me like if you took like a beach electric guitar like shredding song like as the bass, like beach punk 
so it would be how i describe it i liked it it was super catchy you're right the guitar that shit had me locked in and the horns added a nice touch on top and the it was just a great song all around i would say the vocals i feel like were definitely the weakest element i i didn't like them but i thought they were like definitely the weakest part of the song is it just she kind of reminded me of morrissey is that like racist towards like british people <laughs> she kind of reminded me of morrissey mainly because i mean morrissey always does that shit where he like talks normal and then he goes in the upper register but it's like very obvious you can like hear him like making his voice higher she did the same it was very uh reminiscent of morrissey not that that's a bad thing i i just it was something i noticed in her vocals yeah overall i i liked it a lot it came in the four minutes felt like nothing it was full of energy the drive was there the whole time it never like or kind of stopped in the middle but it like intentionally kind of cut itself up and then kept going and i loved it i think the vocals were just kind of i don't know i think in comparison to everything else on the song they were just kind of not bad like they were good but they weren't like the other stuff on the song that i thought was like really really fucking good so i'd probably give it fortune by dogface hermans like a 9 out of 10 i was fucking with it though i enjoyed it a lot all right i just noticed let's let's figure out how to um how to make this dark theme i i need to keep my i need to keep your guys's eyes in mind because i know looking at the light is probably gonna burn some retinas so that's it's an extension is there is there not just like a okay there you go uh i don't know how much better that is anyways guys i tried my best uh hopefully that hurts your eyes less but anyways guys this is the best i can do i i don't i don't know if there's a better way but this is the solution i found hopefully it's less jarring on your your eye sockets all right next we have dream suite in c major by miracle music isn't this that like like musical i'm pretty sure i know this album is honestly probably my top as of right now i do enjoy the whole hawaii part two album though okay yeah i'm pretty sure i've heard of this isn't this that one where it's like all for nothing at all i just remember seeing some long ass video being like the dark story behind that song and like talking about the whole album i'm gonna be real i don't really care how like dark the song is just based on how it sounds and stuff put that image of spongebob and patrick on the kitty roller coaster okay put put that shit in please <laughs> miracle music I i'm coming in with a bit of bias i just know people refer to this as like band kid music so obviously that's not the very nicest of compliments but let's let's give it a shot i'm open to anything you feel me it's a dream so oh it's the outro wow it's seven minutes fuck i but the thing is with this is i know there's like a whole story to the album and everything and it's like it's a very um what's the word fuck what's the word damn how how the fuck i gotta stop doing this youtube channel i can't how can i not remember the name of an album with a story oh my god what the fuck why don't i remember the the name for that shit concept album holy shit how can i not remember that yeah i'm pretty sure this is a concept album right because it's kind of like musical style um which means I feel like I'm gonna preemptively say going into just the outro, I feel like I'm probably missing a whole lot of shit. But let's give it a try, let's give it a listen. Uh, Dream Suite in C major. Okay. I like that. It is vocal is kind of like an effect where he sounds like some like 1950s, 60s sort of like radio. Uh, like a radio spokesman or something. Is this, is this French? I think... I'm pretty sure this is French. Ah. Yeah, no, I understood that part, guys. Come on. I'm gonna be real. I, I am so lost what the fuck is happening. Okay. It, it reminds me a bit of Illinois. Just kind of like how playful and kind of musical the instrumentals are. L like it sounds like a musical, you know what I'm saying? Less grand than Illinois though, but it reminds me a bit of that. We are breaking a lot. There's a lot of instrumental breaks on this. What's happening now? You look quite divine tonight. Here among these vibrant lights. 
video game ass beat. Now that existence is on the way, let's see what we can make. Isn't that like the same kind of flow as like a, a Christmas song? Am I crazy for that? It has the same like. <laughs> My life is like a video game. <laughs> Something crazy gonna happen with the instrumental? No? Alright, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I mean I didn't I don't want anything to happen anyways. There's no fucking way it's this for 30 seconds. I mean it's slowly picking up, but so there's waves in the background as well, I guess, but like Okay, um yeah, no, uh, okay, uh, Dream Suite C, wait, what the fuck, Dream Suite and C Major, a few things, yeah, I, f I feel like I'm definitely missing a bit of context for the song, uh, and as I mentioned in the last video, I think true, like, 10 out of 10 songs are ones that stand completely on their own, even if, like, the rest of the album helps the strength of the song, the song could release as a single and still be a 10. You get what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I think the context is definitely nice and probably needed for this song. One, I did, the vocals were interesting. The kind of like radio effect they had on it. I did like the kind of like musical playfulness of the instrumental. Uh, the instr the fucking like video game sounding ass parts though were uh, interesting. I feel like the rest of the album probably like put that up. It kind of established that so it made more sense on the outro is my guess. The ending was probably my main thing. I really don't know why 40 seconds of the dun 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 dun, dun was necessary. It seemed kind of, I don't know, like I, you could have cut that if I'm being honest, in my opinion. And also there are so many fucking instrumental breaks. Maybe that's like a musical sort of thing, but goddamn, this song could have been like five minutes. Y'all made this shit seven minutes for no reason. Overall, I did like it. I liked the parts where there was backing vocals. Um, but I wasn't like blown away or anything. And it was trying to be more than what it was. Uh, which is such like a nothing statement if I'm being real. But I just didn't fuck with it that much. So I'm probably gonna give Dream Suite and C Major like a six or seven out of ten. Re-listen to this for the video. This shit ass like a four or five, can't lie. Now i um i thought i should include this one even though nobody commented it on the community post i feel like i should include it um here let me move the screen a bit now this wasn't commented on the community post but i'm gonna include this just because of the sheer amount of likes it got on the original what is best song of all time video somebody said starless by king crimson bramble said that and i saw multiple people on both this one and the new one say starless a lot of people agreeing and whatnot just because of how many likes it got i think we should include it let's pull it up isn't this off um this is off red right yeah it is okay i've listened to red before albeit it's been like a year or two and i do remember liking starless one more red nightmare and providence and i think the intro as well so it's been a while though since i've listened to this so let's give it a listen if, if it got a hundred likes, I'm, I'm hoping this shit is a banger. It's amazing. I like this intro, this build up. Mm. Damn. Holy shit. And the, the trumpet or whatever the fuck in the background. Oh man, I'm fucking loving these vocals, dude. Yeah, what are the instrumentals gonna do? Got like eight minutes left. Okay. And they are putting a whole lot of shit in the left ear right now. Bro, they're fucking edging me. Please, just fucking get to the point. All right, here we go. Oh, this is fucking awesome. The electric guitar. It's got all like this, these different percussions or whatever the fuck in both ears. Oh, what the fuck? 
Yo, holy fuck. <laughs> Okay, that part was awesome. We're breaking. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, this is this part is so fucking good. Like combining a bunch of the different parts together. <laughs> Yo, this is so fucking good. Holy fuck. That was awesome. What the fuck? That was so fucking good. Uh, which I probably said like five times, but I, I I'm kind of blown away. Even the parts uh, in the middle after he started, he stopped singing, I meant, where it felt a bit slow, in my opinion, like in the moment. I felt like it was necessary because then we, we slowly started to pick up. We added the like guitar and then the huge explosion, which just felt so grand and epic. And it was like sudden, like a uh, fucking an ex explosion going off, like in the second half or like maybe like the last third, I guess. That was awesome. Yeah, that's a fucking 10 out of 10. That was so good. I love the beginning, how it kind of slowly builds and the vocals are just incredibly powerful. And they have that kind of short, bit more mellow section where the, it's kind of just like the percussion, you know, like the drums and the cowbell and shit like that. And then we have the main drums and the electric guitar and then just that huge explosion that leads out to the whole end. Oh my gosh. I think that's the outro of the album as well, which what a fucking crazy outro, dude. That was incredible. Every part just flowed effortlessly into each other. They each felt like they served this purpose and they just aided each other to make each other part sound even more grand and epic than it already was. I absolutely love that song. Yeah, a fucking 10 out of 10 for Starless. Come on now. Okay, next we have Alvin Rowe by Animal Collective. The way AV Tear, uh, I guess pushed his songwriting skills in an album full of top tier songwriting already is incredible and him also fusing all the influences and him also in oh my fuck and him also fusing all the influences he had at the time noise classical and alternative rock makes it my favorite track i've heard thus far in my music journey now i've heard a lot about alvin Rowe. it's on what spirits they're gone spirits they're vanished i don't know if i mentioned this but animal collective is a band that i've just it's escaped me i've just barely listened to this shit i've listened to meriwether post civilian like once and that's about it now i know a lot of people really like spirit they're gone spirit they're vanished um they vanished i'm pretty i don't know the lore fully behind this but isn't it like it's not the full band it's like two members or like one member and somebody else that made this album or something Damn, this shit's 12 minutes. Okay, uh, the outro. I was, I think I've listened to like one song off here and I just remember it being very harsh in terms of how lo-fi and noisy it was. Yeah, let's give this a listen. Alvin Rowe by Animal Collective. I'm gonna assume you're gonna want me to listen to the original and not the remaster. I'm gonna I'm just assume. Oh no, fuck, I didn't mean to play it. Okay, here we go, Alvin Rowe. I'd be lying to you if I said this wasn't uh, hurting my fucking ears. Okay, this shit's like actually hurting my fucking ears. All right. Okay, I'm starting to feel it, but that ringing in the back of my head. Oh my God, dude, the fucking ringing is still there. But this is good. I like it. Ooh, hold up. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> There's a whole lot of fucking happening right now. Oh, I love the drop when he says Alvin Rao. I have no idea what the fuck is happening, I'll be real. I like I'm trying I'm really trying to understand the lyrics, but <laughs> Wow that
I really like his vocals though. Just like how he sings and stuff. I'm I really fucking like it. Okay, wait, hold up. Guys, um, I have no idea what he's talking about. I'm gonna be honest. Some, it's something about a child, a childhood something. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, but it's probably it's beautiful. It's beautiful as fuck. Is is Alvin Rowe a place, or is it a person? It seems like he's reminiscing on like his childhood. That's so that's a crazy line. I love how it picks up whenever he mentions Alvin's name. Is Alvin, like, his younger self, maybe? I feel like it's a place. I feel like it's a love letter to a place or something. Maybe it is a person, though. We're out to bat. That is a song that I genuinely could not predict where the fuck we were going uh, at any given moment. I don't think I've ever heard a song before that's, on one hand, so abrasive. Like, genuinely, it hurts my fucking ears. And at the same time, incredibly beautiful i think it's mainly his vocals it felt very human and genuine that's why i almost feel like maybe he's talking to his younger self again i'm not exactly sure the lyrics are kind of cryptic and i'm not the best at analyzing lyrics uh, especially off like a first listen but you could tell it's very heartfelt it was a trip because i really didn't know where the fuck we were going i will admit though in the beginning that shit kind of threw me off of it. It was incredibly abrasive. It, it genuinely kind of hurt my fucking ears in the beginning of the song. And that like ringing, the high pitch ringing kind of stayed throughout the whole song almost, but it kind of fluctuated and it became much more prominent in the beginning, but near as the song went along, it either is Stockholm syndrome and I just got used to it or it just got more quiet. Who's to say really? I absolutely love that song. I, I thought it was just so the emotion and the instrumentals and just every second I was wasn't sure what was going to happen. It really felt like just a journey, like somebody was reminiscing on like their past or something or remembering the past of their time with a friend and kind of going through just everything. And the instrumentals were beautiful and they were able to pick up to be super loud and super quiet on like a coin flip it was super just instant and i kind of liked it for that again as i said i think the intro was just maybe i'm just not used to that type of music i did think it threw me off i didn't i didn't really enjoy it like it genuinely hurt my ears but the whole song i liked i liked the uh sample and the outro the vocals were only in the left ear which is kind of interesting, but it really didn't bother me. I just kind of loved almost every second of it, except like that first minute. I'd be lying if I said I liked the first minute of that song, because uh, I didn't really. So I'm probably going to give Alvin Rowe like a 9 out of 10. I could definitely see though, if I listened to this song and this album more frequently, I would get much more used to the harsh noise of it. And I could easily see this being a 10 out of 10. Yeah, what an incredible fucking song, dude. That was a shocker. I liked it a lot though. Yeah, 9 out of 10 for Alvin Rowe by Animal Collective. Next we got, looks like Car Sea Headrest. Tough one for me as an album listener who doesn't really think about individual songs all that much. Same, but I'd probably have to say Hey Space Cadet by Car Sea Headrest, my favorite song off of my favorite album. It encapsulates the album exceedingly well and is a perfect closer to an amazing album. It's such a powerful and unique song with plenty of texture to it. I want to write more, but I'm struggling to describe it in a way that I feel does it justice. Yeah, no, um, hello or hey Space Cadet, Car Sea Headrest, that's the, the closer for How to Leave Town. My favorite Car Sea Headrest album as well, and definitely my favorite song on that album. An album full of like top tier songs, but I just, I love Hey Space Cadet so much. As you said, it really, it kind of drives home a lot of the themes of How to Leave Town, which is a pretty straightforward album in its like themes. I mean, it's in the fucking name, How to Leave Town, right? It's a lot about just your life changing dramatically because of leaving, changing your setting and whatnot, and how you adjust to that and how like, how should you adjust to that? That's a lot of the main themes on How to Leave Town. Hey Space Cadet though, is just the way it slowly builds. Like, let's just give it a listen real quick. Like that intro, that's just like... And then it mellows down. We got the slower part. And the main chorus.
Let me find the one line that I absolutely love on this. This part. This part right here. Right before the major explosion. Oh my god, dude. And my favorite line is the next one. It's just... And then it... Right? What a fucking amazing song. For sure a 10 out of 10 for Hey Space Cadet. Just a huge closer. One of, I think, Car Seat Headrest's best long songs. Just in the way it builds and how every moment is just huge and larger than life. So many of the lyrics on here as well, I think, is some of Will's best writing. Where he's, uh, mainly because he's writing about something a bit different than what he usually does, which I think is really cool. And the callbacks too, especially in the album sense. But even without the context of the album, I think this is a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love hey space get out next up we got islands by king crimson absolutely beautiful song that right now i would say is my favorite unlike king crimson's other works this is much more classically focused however i still feel like it takes a lot of ideas from prog music and blends them perfectly all right well we already looked at starless so let's see this i've not listened to this at damn it's 11 i mean i say i say 11 minutes like that's that long for king crimson like half their songs are over 10 minutes but give it a listen i've never heard this honestly the most i've heard of king crimson is just the very bare minimum which is in the court of the crimson king and uh red that's it i'm literally besides that, i have not listened to a single king crimson song or album so let's give this a listen It's very chill right now. I'm wondering where it's gonna go from here. Man, this is the most chill, calm King Crimson song I've ever heard. Piano is really beautiful on this. It kind of feels like mournful. Does that make sense? Maybe it's just because of how like the pianos and the horns and stuff. Is, it, is this what you mean by it's more traditional? Because it definitely isn't as like wild or crazy in the different parts so far. We're like four minutes in and it's very much just in this very nice chill piano driven part. There's like this noise in my right ear though. Is it supposed to be like that? The vocals are only on my left and then like... There's like specific instruments on my right, but... Some instruments are in both. I'm liking this so far, but... I don't know if it's just like... The format it is on Spotify, but this shit, There's like a bunch of shit only in my right ear. It's annoying the hell out of me. But it's like not all the instruments, like the whole, like the horn right here is just, it's not in the right ear, but like everything else is. Dude, I, I like the song, but why is so much of it only in my right ear? Like right now, right now it's only in my, my right ear. Is it supposed to be like that? Cause it's, uh, it's fucking me up. Is it, is there more? Oh, okay. I assume this is the outro, right? And then the silence would be like, if it was a vinyl rip, it would lead into the bonus tracks. Uh, I'm assuming. Oh, pretend I didn't do that. Pretend I didn't do that. How that, no, it actually like fucked up my right ear. What the hell? I like the song. I thought it was, I thought it was good. It's very chill, peaceful, and very different than what I usually expect from King Crimson. So it was cool to see. All right, it's just them in the studio. Never mind. Um, Islands by King Crimson. I enjoyed it. It's very different than what I usually expect and what I've come to expect from King Crimson songs. It felt like a swan song that just was incredibly peaceful yet uh, happy. 
it happy it's like a happy send off to somebody and it was nine minutes of just chill with the horns came in i thought the song was really good and despite it being relatively samey throughout the horns being added in and the vocals just helped keep it uh not boring now i don't know if this is how it was put on spotify actually let's check let's let's go on youtube right now basically what was happening is i was listening to it right and then for like almost all the song there was some audio only my right ear constant and it was fucking up my right ear okay no it's on this one too i don't know how, what you would call that is is that mixing or whatever again normal person reviews right i don't know shit about music that definitely and this is gonna sound like such a huge nitpick but that genuinely like just distracted me and fucking took me out of the song so much because for so much of it there was just this constant kind of background noise to the song that would only play in my right ear and it, it fucking just felt weird maybe that's on purpose but it just no i didn't think it worked besides that i thought the song was good and when it wasn't super noticeable the song was great but i'd say for about like a half of the song i noticed that it was very evident uh in the headphones so i'd probably give islands like an 8 out of 10. i ain't gonna lie having to re-listen to that noise while editing this shit's like a 7 probably because genuinely it was a very good song it was just that weird i guess mixing choice that just kind of fucked it up for me from the last time i've recorded it's been probably about three weeks um from the last clip you just saw of islands by king crimson i got a bit lazy some stuff was happening so i couldn't record to make up for it this video will probably be extra long this might be like hour and a half two hours let's get straight into it with more of your guys's best songs of all time next person says basketball shoes by black country new okay well, we we've done that emotional send off to isaac gorgeous instrumental supported by isaac okay but a more recent obsession is it i appear missing by queens the stone age maybe not the best of all time but the story behind it the general sonic values of the song make it one of the best you said the story behind it guys sir let me let me search that up real quick Let, let's see what the lore is you feel me written in reflection upon his coma following a knee operation which went wrong what the fuck as i appear or fuck i appear missing queens of the stone age never listened to queens of the stone age i recognize this album but never listened to it so let's go oh yo <laughs> i liked how his vocals vo his vocals are vocaling i i can't lie <laughs> oh my god dude when it picks up it's oh okay I, I like this part a lot like just how he sings it big fan i assume when he means pinned like a note in a hostile gown it's like he's like stuck on the bed right he's like in the coma which is a really like interesting way to put it oh my god dude i love the vocals in this way how it sounds and just the guitars are going fucking crazy and all the instrumentals okay as i appear missing my queens of the stone age i definitely see how maybe knowing the context of that makes the song a lot more powerful definitely some interesting lyrics and just ways he's explaining how he's in the coma as i said the the pinned to a bed in a hospital gown pretty good lyric uh not that i know anything about writing good lyrics though <laughs> it's not like you know the most crazy sounding song i've ever heard in my life but it's very like it hits all the notes it does everything right and i was having a great time listening to it it was emotional you know it switched up just enough to keep it interesting i was nodding my head to it the whole time the ending was amazing probably my favorite part of the song and i just enjoyed so much of it i will say yeah there was definitely a point of it there i did feel like it was just kind of a bit it was cool like that that's how i feel like i wasn't like blown away but i was like that's a good song i enjoyed that song um definitely i'd say i'm trying to think of stuff i've heard that sounds like that maybe women like their public strain album some of the vocals kind of sound a bit similar as i pure missing by queens of the stone age probably like a like an 8 out of 10 i'm thinking probably an 8 out of 10 next we have oh shit i'm about to butcher this i tend tenshi by bet cover most melancholic bittersweet song ever or shit i've ever heard everything about it feels massive despite being under six minutes the guitar and piano lines throughout are absolutely beautiful and the rhythm section are the pocket like any classic jazz combo would be gyro Yan yanase gives probably the most vulnerable vocal performance of his career especially in the last verse and the final chord of the last guitar solo is the car Cathartic, 
oh my god is the cathartic moment in all of music for me that cover okay so that cover is something i like i know that cover went like double diamond triple platinum for spotify recommending this album damn near i think spotify recommends this album to anybody who's listened to a, a single song from fishman's swear to god i have listened to like a tiny bit i don't remember anything oh wait it's right here right is that the right one yeah it looks like the right one okay cool uh, i've listened to this live album when it came out i've not listened to it since and i barely remember it mainly i listened to this because in 2023 so many of the albums especially in the beginning of the year that were coming out were like live albums that people were really hyped about it was like this there was um king gizzard there was paranormal so yeah besides that i haven't what the fuck what is this okay interesting yeah i haven't really listened to much of that cover so let's give it a listen i think it's this one the characters look the same so we're gonna assume it's that one and uh yeah let's go Ooh. okay yeah this shit's like butter bro this is smooth as fuck i don't know what the hell he's saying though he's probably spinning Oh. Oh. Oh, the layered vocal is okay. Oh, this part's so good. Yeah. I was not expecting that. That was probably the last thing I was expecting. I love how they include the piano as well in this part. Okay, just right back into it, holy shit. I love how it's like kind of hangs for a second, then it goes. I just love it, how it's like stops and then just dips, it's so good. Something crazy is about to happen. I need more of that. Holy shit. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, the, the song was like, okay, I guess. It was, it was, it was all right. It was all right, I guess. Yeah, no, just kidding. Immediately gotta like the fuck out of that. I love how each part, it would be like kind of a slight stop, slight stop, and then we just dip back into it. Just the piano kind of driving everything and the two breaks with the fucking electric guitar. It just sounded so powerful and the whole song was just so dreamy and so, yeah, as you said, cathartic, especially during those guitar moments. Definitely probably my favorite moments were when the, I don't know if it's background vocalist or maybe they just layered the vocals and how they would just kind of like dip. I, I love that song. Absolutely love that song. Gonna be listening the fuck out of that for sure. That was amazing. Makes me want to check out the whole album. It's just incredible. There's so many things happening and the vocals, you know, I don't understand Japanese, obviously. I just felt so genuine. I, I don't know, dude. It's just, I don't, whatever he was saying, he was spitting facts just the way everything dipped in and out of itself it paused just to give you like a second to breathe just to go back in nothing short of amazing i'm gonna give this song by Beck cover kaiten tenshi 10 out of 10 i absolutely love that that was incredible all right next we have um an insanely basic pick but have no other choice than to pick bohemian rhapsody everything about it is perfect it's structure pacing lyricism atmosphere vocals and that beautiful large tam tam that hits at the end of the song the song i could play hundreds of times and never get sick of and i get goosebumps every time i hear it. a timeless classic now here's the thing i've obviously heard bohemian rhapsody plenty of times we're, we're not even gonna play this one okay we you've all heard this song is it an amazing song yes is it an all-time classic yes does everybody in the world know this song most likely does that make it one of the best songs ever probably but i got too many memories of listening to this shit when i was incredibly cringy more so than now and just the the people i was around that listened to this shit and the memories that come back hell no being serious the song itself the lyrics are incredibly powerful the story it sort of tells and of course the ending section where it switches things up is nothing short of amazing i honestly have a lot of memories though of mainly just playing this song on rock hero for the wii so yeah i don't know i just can't look at that song like seriously if i'm being honest <laughs> maybe it's just because i it's i've heard it so much or just like i heard it when i was like young i just i honestly can't look at that song seriously i'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 it's probably a 10 like objectively but you know we all have our own opinions and whatnot so I, i'm just giving it a 9 out of 10 you feel me next we have at the chime of a city clock 
by Nick Drake. The only way to describe this song is that it'd be the perfect soundtrack to walking down a dimly lit snowy road and cozying up by a fireplace afterwards. Sounds nice, let's give it a listen. Is this off of, uh, I don't know, honestly, I've never, no, that's a lie. I've listened to the other Nick Drake albums once, but it's it's been some fucking time. Yeah, as you see, you know, I got some light songs. Older Nick Drake albums, like his first two, are definitely more upbeat. He's an artist that I probably should be into more based on how much I like singer-songwriters. I really have not given him the time of day that he probably deserves. Let's go straight into it. At the Chime of a City Clock by Nick Drake. Let's go. Yeah, this shit's groovy as fuck already. Nick Drake's vocals are always just so intimate. Right in your ear. Oh, whoa. I wasn't expecting that. Wow, dude. It's so uh orchestral, I guess. Oh. Fucking jump scared me. I, I genuinely don't. Maybe like out of place in the city. I don't know what the fuck Nick Church is talking about. Nick Drake is just so intimate, bro. He, he's so personal. He's like he's just confessing to me all the time. Like whenever he sings, any song I've heard from him. No idea what the fuck he's talking about. I, I don't pass the media literacy test for Nick Drake, bro. The trumpet or whatever, only the right ear, kind of fucking with me, can't lie. What a nice song, dude. But 1970, dude. Nick Drake, what the fuck? Yeah, it's kind of like you said. Um, while I was listening to it, I was kind of imagining kind of the scenario you put up. You said it'd be like perfect soundtrack for walking down a dimly lit snowy road and cozying up next to the fireplace. The song feels very comforting. Nick Drake, it just sounds so, unlike a lot of songs as I mentioned, very personal, but it sounds so comforting. I'd be lying if I said I fully understood the lyrics. I fucking don't. But I just love how close up his vocals are, how soft his vocals are. I like how the instrumentals are never overpowering Nick Drake. By adding just enough to keep the song interesting and keep the atmosphere this very kind of chill, slightly upbeat I feel sort of vibe. And then every now and then they pick up, we get like, I think it's like some strain, some violin or something. And then and sometimes in the breaks, it sounded like a lot bigger. And then we had that trumpet. Honestly, that's literally my only complaint about the song. It's like I said on Islands. I don't know if it's just because it's how it's put on here, but the trumpet only being in my right ear, that shit, no. No, I'm fine if music plays in separate ears, but when it's like one very obvious instrument or sound that I hear and it's constant, it distracts me from the song if I'm being, if I'm being honest. Yeah, so I didn't fuck with that. If that, literally, if that was just in both ears, um, would have been a perfect song. I know, very nitpicky thing. I like the song a lot. It was very comforting. It was very nice, but because of that trumpet, I'm probably give it a nine out of 10. Can't lie. Next, we have An Orphan of Fortune by MGMT. Such power to this closer of their self-titled release. It's slow, hypnotic, and beautiful. To me, everything about the song is perfect. The claustrophobic production works very well on this song. Every time I listen to this song, I feel the need to listen to it again because it's so good. And it's also some of Andrew's best lyrics yet. It's an underrated song and an underrated album. To me, it's perfect. MGMT. This is the people who make all the little dark age edits, right? Not just kidding. But I've never listened to MGMT uh, besides, you know, obviously the constant jokes of uh, my little dark age you said it's on oh yeah you're right yeah i've never heard anybody talk about it. obviously you know you hear people talk about first release congratulations and little dark age i'm not anything about this stuff all right might as well be my first time listening to mgmt2 i don't honestly know what you would call their sound not very familiar with it let's give it a listen an orphan for fortune my little dark age or wait shit no mgmt <laughs> It's like something fucking crawling back and forth. <laughs> Very ominous start. Sounds like a uh, alien ship sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> that shit woke me up. I was... <laughs> it kind of put me in a trance with that intro and then just... Everything feels like it's just getting a bit louder as we go along. That is true, that is the order it goes in usually. Are we gonna jump back in?
Okay, yes yeah, sir, yes yeah, sir. Oh, dude, holy shit. There's so much happening at once, it's, it's kind of amazing. Okay, this is interesting. All right, yeah, no, that was a really good song. I, I liked how the first like minute and a half, minute-ish was very calm, very chill. And I was, I was kind of in trance. I was enjoying it. I was just kind of zoned out to it a bit. And then, boom, right? Fucking fireworks go off. Everything just kind of comes in. I was shocked. Like, I, just, I was not expecting that at all. The vocal is very simple, very sweet. I love how everything is picking up. And then we kind of drop down and he says, uh, come back down and then everything picks back up just sounds crazy there's so much happening at once but it was awesome i loved how it sounded and then we kind of slowly fade out at the end and honestly i wish after we kind of dropped everything it just stopped instead of there being like the extra 40 seconds of whatever the fuck that outro was but besides honestly besides that outro i think the song was very nice i, I enjoyed it a lot i really i just don't really get what the first minute last like 40 seconds were for but everything was great it just felt like huge it felt every single time dropped and came back in it felt like fireworks were just going off constantly it's like a million fireworks are going off all at the same time so i'd probably give it like a like an eight or a nine out of ten next we have delete by blade and Taiwo digital or or blade because Taiwo digital is a feature but i mean it's drag gang so it's like they all kind of use blade as a vessel to make music <laughs> yeah uh first track off glue what an absolute banger probably one of blade's best songs you know, i like glue i think it's blade's either second her third best album my my favorites ever since elite Ooh, such a good song one of blades honestly most memorable vocals truth be told on glue especially blade was more in his singing sort of stuff he was really belting that shit out and with the auto tune it's so good let's just listen to some of it i absolutely love this song i'm gonna say preemptively it's a talent 10 it's one of maybe if not Blade's best song, objectively. Uh, not my favorite Blade song, but top five, top 10 Blade songs, absolutely. It's one of like the best like cloud rap songs, like period, I, I don't think that's up for debate. How it starts, it's just so cold. You get the vocals, everything just feels kind of muffled and like drowned out. The Blade City, 1000 diamonds. Like, we kind of just never really got Blade singing like this um, from this point onwards, you feel me? Like, Glue is kind of the end of it. Obviously, some of his stuff before this, like, My Magic is Strong, he would do this, but in, like, Subaru. But after Glue, is that kind of Blade was just gone. But I absolutely love Blade like this. And then this part, hold up. Like, Blades never just belted shit like this before. Is it perfect? No, absolutely no. But it just feels so real. And Tie Boy's feature is awesome, too. It's actually just amazing. You hit the outro where it's just... It's a fucking 10 out of 10. It's one of Blade's best songs. It's one of the best cloud rap songs. Blade is fucking... That's like honestly maybe one of his most emotional performances in terms of just how much he's putting into it. His voice is like, it's all, it's cracking. It's not perfect, but just the sheer amount of auto-tune, the production, everything about that song is amazing. Tie Boy's part's fantastic. The only Blade song, in my opinion, that comes very similar to me in terms of just how it makes me feel is Buildings which is another song with Lane and Tie Boy. Perfect song, deletes a 10 out of 10. Yeah, as you said, just a simply an amazing vocal performance on top of my favorite beat of all time. Also, Tie Boy's part is like a top three moment in music. Okay, I don't know about all that. Blade's vocals, this might be my favorite vocal performance from Blade. It's just so different than anything, but it's more similar to stuff Blade had before this with like some singles. But after this, we really didn't get Blade like this ever again. And it's, it's really special and absolutely one of my favorite Blade songs and a 10 out of 10 easily for delete next we have Christian said very subjective but mine's got to be elaine versus her own treacherous physiology is that how you pronounce that word by lilac roadkill off the windmill album or off the album windmill listen to that whole album at a point in my life a few years ago where i really really needed it and that track in particular hit me like a truck that build up in the beginning beautiful vocals amanda cut steve lyrics really stick with me as a fellow queer woman her music in general has done a lot to help me get through hard times hearing that i'm not alone hearing something that feels like it's speaking directly to me and that's what i needed i'll be forever great 
Grateful for her work. Grateful to her for her work. Fuck, I can't read. Let's check it out. Let's look it up. All right, I think this is it. It's quite short. Okay, two minutes, 40 seconds. Okay, let's give it a listen. Okay. Sorry if I'm not speaking, I'm trying to listen to lyrics. <laughs> Okay, kind of leads into the next song. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so it was kind of like, I didn't have the lyrics pulled up, obviously, so what if I didn't have them? It's talking about house, not clean, but the other person's is clean, so maybe just like different ways they live their lives and how like they're maybe separate now, but they want to meet up, you know, link up, run some duos in Fortnite or something. You know, maybe I should have pulled up the lyrics, so that's my bad. I like the song. Okay, everything I'm about to say is somebody who doesn't make music. You know, if you don't already, guys, don't take my opinion seriously. Okay, I just, I just yap. Yeah. I was born to yap. That's why I do. I just yap. But um, I kind of wish the vocals were more like ingrained in the instrumental. Does that make sense? Uh, I felt like the vocals were very kind of just put on top of the instrumentals, which makes sense. But they just kind of sounded very separate. Maybe that's maybe that's a nothing complaint. But just the vocals and the instrumentals felt so like apart from each other for me, which is I know this that might be a nitpick. Felt a bit jarring in my opinion because of that. If they were maybe just like kind of push together more like they were just kind of more like embedded into the instrumentals i think the song would have been like amazing amazing i liked it though the lyrics are interesting you know it's a short song but we had like 30 second very slow and then everything came in got the lyrics are just spit just spitting the straight facts fire you feel me then and i liked it i enjoyed the song it's very short and sweet felt very heartfelt and uh genuine like calling out to somebody i haven't seen in a while so i'll probably give the song like a i don't know it was cool like i wasn't like i couldn't say i was necessarily in love with it maybe it's because i didn't have the lyrics pulled up but i didn't hate it at all i'd probably give it like a six out of ten i think it's good you guys gotta remember six out of ten is not a bad score a ten is a perfect song a zero is a shit you know shouldn't exist song five's like okay and six is pretty cool i enjoyed it so yeah uh six out of ten for elaine versus her own let me make sure i said this right treacherous physiology by lilac roadkill next we have souls by carsey headdress dude that's what the person said simple as you feel me that is facts though souls is a top tier carsey headdress song it's a song that when i first heard it like a while back i honestly didn't i underappreciated you feel me off monomania and then when i re-listened to it multiple times for the carsey headdress discog video i honestly underappreciated it then too but since then i've listened to it an absolute shit ton i love the song because unlike a lot of other carsey headrest long songs it's very flowing you get what i mean carsey headrest on the long songs will usually has tons of moving parts which he does on souls but usually it's a bit more abstract but souls is quite literally just like one big story souls directly leads off of los barochos or however you pronounce it, where Will meets up with his friends he hasn't seen in a while and they get drunk. And Souls is literally just that night of him getting drunk, getting fucked up, and wanting to see people, wanting to feel people. It's an amazing song. I love the vocals. I love, it's just, that's just this intro, right? More than anything, this feels like one of the most stream of consciousness Will Toledo songs ever. He's just saying whatever comes to mind. It's very straightforward. It's just the story, right? Oh, this part, this part. I, I like the bar too. This is one of my favorite lines. Hey, Will's just belting it. And it kind of slows down. Will is so desperate on this song. Like, holy shit, bro. And then the end, how everything gets more quiet. And the party's ending, everybody's going home. And this part where it's just it's a nine ten minute song almost that is just a straight story it's will 
trying to get over the or interpretations ahead but you know will try to get over the relationship from twin fantasy and he goes and gets shrunk and gets fucked up at this party trying to avoid his emotions when uh, they just come hurtling in and it's all he can think about and he's just desperate he's desperate for some human connection and the whole song is just that and i just love how it fluctuates while also maintaining this whole story throughout it's just fantastic also there's parts where will's just belting it out also love how it kind of ends kind of back where we started where will is <laughs> Well, it's fucking alone again, so, you know. Yeah, for sure, one of Carsey Hedris' best songs, in my opinion. Honestly, when you look at Carsey Hedris' best songs, a general requirement for best Carsey Hedris' song seems that it has to be, like, at least eight minutes long. Hey, Will's just good at writing and making long songs, dude. What can I say? Yeah, Souls, a 10 out of 10, for sure. I think it's definitely a grower, though. I think part of the reason I think it's a 10 is because I've listened to it so many times. So, because I think in terms of long Carsey Hedris' songs, there are far better ones, but... I think they're all quite fantastic. This song has grown on me so much. So yeah, I'd give Souls by Carsey Hedris a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this song. It means a lot to me. Next, we have quite possibly the realest comment of all time that I've ever received. This person says, Sparkle Original Version by Radwimps. This is, this is such, you don't know how much this means to me. Sparkle, for those who don't know, is a song from Your Name. It's on screen now, an anime film. Very well-known one the animation beautiful soundtrack amazing characters they're all right listen i'm a, i love your name i love your name but let's not cap that the animation and soundtrack hard carry story and characters are like cool they're all right but the animation and soundtrack hard carry your name honestly sparkle and the other song off of the your name soundtrack both mean a lot to me i've listened to them so many times and this is this is such a real pick like this is just i'm gonna be real i always listen to the the english version i know i know i'm a, I'm a dub over sub guy most of the time i listen to the english version because the english version is official like um the singer rad wimps you can search up interviews his english is really good he sounds like he's from like the u.s like his accent when he speaks english it sounds like american it's wild so the dubbed versions of these songs for the english dub of the movie are by rad wimps it's there's not like somebody else singing it it's literally the same guys i i don't really see um a big deal with it and i just like you know understanding what the fuck the lyrics are saying like Come on, dude, like... Everything just kind of builds up. It's so beautiful, and then... And then it's right at the end where he's like... Job back down. That's such a real pick. That's such a real pick. I, I give it a 10. I know you're probably thinking you give everything a 10. Yeah, this is the best songs of all time. Of course, most of the songs people put in are going to be 10s because people are picking, you know, songs from every song ever that are the best. You feel me? For personal reasons, a 10. That's just such a classic song for me. I've listened to that song God knows how many times and I absolutely love the shit out of it. That's honestly a real ass pick. I for sure give Rad Wimps sparkle from the your name soundtrack a 10 out of 10 next this person says it's got to be love is lost by david bowie more specifically the james murphy mix for me it feels like a homage to a musical titan without calling too much attention to itself and instead feels like the natural progression of bowie's musical thesis dang you pulled out the big words for this one i'm gonna assume this is it, it says hello steve reich mix by james murphy okay we're gonna assume this is damn it's 10 minutes okay let's get straight into this you feel me let's get straight into it Oh, wait, that's that's kind of cool. Really taking our time in between each of these vocal parts. Oh, hold up, okay. I can't lie, this beat is like, it seems like those ones. <laughs> That would play like for those like synth songs where it's like the car, the vaporwave shit. Uh, I'll put some of that on screen. <laughs> I like this end part a lot. When was this? When was this made? 
2013, okay. Okay, so Love is Lost, James Murphy mix. I'll say I thought a lot of it was very interesting, but I didn't necessarily love it. I thought it was cool how it started with all like the audience applause and then that kind of started the drum sort of beat, I guess. I'm gonna be honest, I just feel like there's a lot of dead air in the track. We had a lot of time where it was just kind of the beat. I don't know, even though it was cool that I was clapping, I didn't think the beat was like that interesting. And we didn't really like, we kind of built towards the end, which was by far the coolest part, but it really didn't feel like it needed to be 10 minutes long. That shit could have been like five or six. I think that would have been plenty. I don't know. I just, I think the beat was just very kind of okay for me. Maybe that was what they're going for though. You know, that's my opinion, but I thought the vocals were obviously the highlight of the song for sure. Vocals were obviously the best part of this. But yeah, honestly, I just felt, I feel very like lukewarm on this song. Like it just felt like it really, really overstate its welcome like much more than it needed to i'd honestly probably give it like a five i don't hate it i don't really like it at all though i think it's way too long i found the beat to be well interesting initially kind of just boring afterwards and david boy hard carry and i don't i don't hear him enough for it to like make up for the, the instrumental so honestly i'm gonna give love is lost uh james murphy mix specifically assuming this is the version you you wanted this is the one i found the five out of ten that wasn't that big of a fan. All right, next we have, this person says, I can't choose one. So if you only want to do one, then choose a random one from this comment. Okay, you gave me four. All right, well, fuck it. We'll just do lightning round, lightning round. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, lightning round. Let's do this really fast. Avalanches, since I left you, this song is so incredibly fucking beautiful. The way all the samples and elements come together is once in a lifetime. Facts, since I left you is an absolute banger. You could play it for anybody. You could play it for your mom, your dad, your, uh, your sister, your brother your grandma, anybody would fuck with this. Such a beautiful song that just makes you feel incredibly happy, incredibly catchy, and just, uh, it's beautiful, as you said. Okay, I haven't listened to Ride, Leave Them All Behind, so we will listen to that. The Cure's Disintegration, very recently reviewed the whole album. I think Disintegration's an amazing song. You say, perfect songwriting, the bass line is awesome, excellent guitar work and synth work, easily one of the most emotional songs I've ever heard. It is a fantastic song. Is it my favorite? off of the album maybe not i i kind of like pictures of you more can't lie yeah no the songwriting is incredible the vocal performance especially in the second half of that song is gut-wrenching like he's just giving it everything and it really is the disintegration the opus part of the album i absolutely love it i think it's a fantastic song uh oh yeah fuck since i lift you i'd give a 10 disintegration i'd probably give it a nine uh just because i'll just be straight up i because i don't think it's a 10 so i just give it a nine but it's still fantastic right okay slint washer of course so much grief and apathy packed into a song incredibly cold the climax is bone chilling yes washer is a fantastic song probably oh uh, some of the most interesting songwriting on spiderland which is saying a lot because a lot of spiderland songwriting is top tier washer probably is my favorite off Spider-Land. I think I like Good Morning Captain more, but it is top tier. Everything about it is amazing. And as you say, the climax, that shit had me floored when I first heard it. I'd give Washer a 10 out of 10 easily. Okay, now let's listen to Ride, Leave Them All Behind. You say, one of the most grand and epic journeys in a song ever. The walls of sound are amazing. Performance on drums, guitar, bass, vocals, literally everything is immensely passionate. All right, let's give it a listen. Damn, it's eight minutes. <laughs> I can't be listening to these long songs no more, guys. Just kidding. I don't care if the songs are long. Okay. Drums coming in hot as fuck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like a, like a storm, like a fucking tornado. Oh, is this vocals come in? Kind of break. Get chill a little hot sec after explosion of noise. I think he's telling us to leave them all behind. What? His vocals kind of sound like, Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. Dude, I did. I don't like British or something, but the, they sound like the tonight will be the night. One last chill moment before we, before we bring it all back, run it back one more time. 
I was I was not expecting that. Ride, leave them all behind. Epic journeys and a song ever. The wall of sound. Yeah, the wall of sound is good. I I think especially in the beginning, uh, I like how it kind of ramped up one notch and then fully went in. Very cool. The whole song was pretty good. Honestly, though, I think it was ever so slightly kind of repetitive. And especially near the end, I was just kind of I was just kind of tired of the sound of the song by like the last like minute or two, uh, maybe even three. Like it just I feel like it overstayed its welcome a bit. Uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. The lyrics, I do think they were they're kind of whatever. Vocals were cool. But again, as I said, it reminds me of the tonight will be the night like that's what it sounded like it was grand it was like it was trying to just kind of take over everything and uh i enjoyed it but again i think it's ever so slightly repetitive i don't know i just think it overstayed its welcome a bit i'd probably give leave them all behind my ride like an 8 out of 10 i still enjoyed it though so yeah hey everyone if you've watched this far in the video thank you i hope you enjoyed it i plan currently to only have one more of the best songs of all time video basically it's just i should not have said um comment on the community post and linked it in the second video. It's mainly just because while I enjoy making these and I appreciate how much reception they've gotten, it is kind of draining and a bit boring. The next video will be the last, the finale, part four, and I'm just going to be going over all the more original comments I got in like the first, you know, week, two weeks of posting the community tab. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you watched all the way here, I love you. Thank you for doing that. I hope you have a good day, night, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are, you feel me? And uh, take care of yourself.